So once again, our friend John Cricket is back. And I do want to clarify, I have nothing against him. I like him. I follow him on LinkedIn because I like his content. He's back again. N must have software engineering skills. One, the ability to code in at least one programming language. It doesn't matter which. Technically true, but that's a little redundant. It's like saying the ability to read. Technically true. Okay, not off to a great start. How to effectively search, be it Google or grepping through a code base. I think that's 100% correct. That's probably the single most important one. Searching for information that you don't know what it is. Searching for a concept that you might not know. Sometimes as you're solving a problem, you realize that in that problem space, there are certain concepts, very important concepts, you don't even know what they are. Being able to identify that is also really important. Like you realize, okay, I'm kind of out of my water. I got to really learn about these things. You're in a code base or whatever, and you see all these files, you don't know what they are. You might have to do some research on them. That's the biggest one in my opinion. And understanding of the core computer science algorithms. So what does that mean? You know, it could be sorting. It could be basic things. We could think of leak code problems like graph traversals. When I think of this, I think of even more simple things, things like map reduce, like mapping data to other data or taking data and aggregating it. Things that you might see very commonly in like SQL operations. I think that's very important because uh, you really need to understand those concepts before you can do more complicated things when it comes to databases, front end stuff, and distributed computing, data processing, batch processing, stream processing, like the concept of a stream. So yeah, that's good. Ability to dig into, understand, and solve problems. So obviously it's worded ambiguously but i do think it's 100 percent correct like a software engineer isn't somebody who knows 100 things and then can solve 100 problems based on those things it's somebody who knows the basics or the fundamentals and then based on that they can research to solve more complex problems that they've never solved before as an engineer you're not usually going to be doing the same thing repeatedly so yeah research he doesn't say the word research but yeah, to dig into, understand, and then ultimately solve a problem is important. Understanding of time and space complexity. To me, this doesn't mean like knowing the academic stuff, being able to academically prove the complexity of a particular algorithm. It's just about generally knowing that linearly scanning through a bunch of data is not going to be as efficient as if you didn't have to do that. And obviously, n squared, going through a big set of data a variable number of times is not going to be efficient. Just being able to understand where like significant bottlenecks might be in your code is important because otherwise you're going to end up with some really, really bad code. The ability to work effectively in a team, ambiguously worded, but it's technically correct. Effective written communication. That's very, very important. Most communication as engineers is written, especially when it comes to documentation. Documentation can live for a very long time, much more than like a meeting that you have just once true An understanding of data structures it's true again like even more than the complicated stuff you know b trees and all those things very very basic things like knowing what a hash map is is important because then you understand a lot of things you understand like key value stores you understand like why primary keys are important in a database you understand indexes hash indexes you understand a lot of stuff understanding tree structures is very very important they come up in a lot of places file systems databases yeah an understanding of like the fundamental data structures graphs as well graphs come up a lot the concept of like a pointer in databases like a NoSQL database database, you might have one document that references another document, it references two other documents. And under the hood, you know, you can kind of visualize that as a graph, you can think of it as pointers connecting documents together. So that makes sense to me. And obviously, there's specific graph databases like Neo4j, be able to debug effectively. Yeah, like anytime you have a problem in your code, and you don't know how to debug it, that's the worst position to be in or a problem with something. So more than just debugging code, you might have a problem that exists among like multiple services and being able to debug something like that. You have five services working together and you're just trying to figure out which service has the bug. I think the biggest skill that I learned while I was working at Google is that tooling is the best way to debug things. If your tooling is not good for the problem that you're trying to solve, you don't have a prayer of a chance of solving a bug with so much code that you never read and don't understand. If you can't even narrow it down, you don't have a chance of figuring the bug out. And Google had very good tooling to debug and learning the tooling was very important. The ability to learn, true. 
and testing number 11. Obviously there's 11 here. That's an off by one error. Maybe that's intentional, but I think this is a good post. 